Last night, we stopped at requirement design. So we've um, come to the end of uh, requirement management. So tonight we are, we are, we are starting with uh, various techniques in business analysis. And we did it in such a way that you see the techniques per stage during your project life cycle. So I break it down into initiate stage when we are trying to initiate your project. When you are designing your solution, when you are executing your solution, and when you are closing your solution, these are various techniques you can em employ at every point in time during your project management from the beginning to the end. That is end-to-end, -end, full project life cycle. So with this, you know what to do when you are starting or when you are ending. And the first thing, the first technique we are going to look at as a business analyst, this technique is not the whole thing. Please mute yourself. This technique is not a technique, uh, techniques for project management. It's techniques that involves business analysis from beginning to the end within a project. Not the whole, because there are some other things that is meant to be done for project managers. Uh, we, we are not capturing here. So we are capturing here what is um, what the business analyst is involved with, how a business analyst can manage uh, a project or a part of a project. Number one here is um, stakeholder management. It's very important for a business analyst to know how to manage stakeholders. They are very key. You need to always collaborate with them. You need to always be having series of meetings with them. You need to keep on gathering requirements and keep on refining requirements. You don't need to um, Based anything on a uh, assumption, everything must be clear. So, and that's why, as a business analyst, you need to start with stakeholder management in order to understand their requirements. If you don't understand their stakeholder, there is no way you can understand their requirements. So, here we have risky metrics, stakeholder analysis and person. Then after that, we have um, risk management. There is so many ways to manage risk, extent, but we are going to use read log. It captures a lot. If you know how to use read very well, you will capture almost everything you want within your risk. Um, management. Then we come to requirement elicitation. We have an interview, observation, workshop, survey questionnaire. Then we have requirement analysis. We have process analysis. We have uh, process modeling, 
we have data modeling, we have root cause analysis, we have gap analysis, we have prioritization, we have brainstorming, we have solution evaluation, we have business case. So these are techniques you need to use. Then when you come to solution design, have a requirement design, and that is by using user stories, acceptance criteria, use cases, wireframes to mock up, and test cases, that's test plan. When you come to project execution, within agile and agile environment, which uh, that is what we're going to be using, we'll have a sprint planning, sprint stand-up, sprint demo, sprint retrospective. And after then, come to closure, and then we we'll have project um, closure reports. And um, you now this closure as well, we we'll have um, um, post implementation review. So, which I'll say add it here. So let's um, get started. We're going to start with stakeholder management tools. This, we've done it before. We've done this during project management model. We're repeating it here because it's a requirement here. So we cannot jump it because um, we've done it because, because it's a requirement for this model. So, but we still have to do it. So we have a um, communication plan, we have a RACI, we have a stakeholder analysis document, and we have a RACI. So so let's um, look at RACI metrics once more as we um, Discuss earlier within the other model. Racing metrics is an effective way to define rules and responsibilities of various stakeholders towards achieving common goal. It brings clarity to the rules people play within the project. RACI stands for Responsible, Accountable, Consulted, and uh, Informed. So what it means is that someone needs to be responsible for a particular deliverable or a particular activity or particular tax within the project. Everybody is not doing everything at the same time. Project management is a, mainly a cross-functional team. Different professionals coming together to deploy a solution. Everybody bringing their expertise. So with RACI, everybody needs to understand what they are going to be doing based on their skill sets. So which are, you know what you're responsible. Everybody know what's responsible, what your responsibilities within a project. And A is accountable. If something goes wrong, somebody needs to be held accountable. So, and that person accountable is the person that will make sure that every activity is performed. The person performing the activity is responsible. 
But the person that making sure that that activity is performed is the person that is accountable. So now as a project manager, I'm, I'm, I'm accountable. I'm, I make sure that everybody perform their duty. So I'm, I'm accountable. I make sure that uh, the developers do their job. And I make sure that the business analysts, they do their job and everybody does their jobs within the project so that the project can move within the timeline and they're within the budget. So it's half C for consulted. Consulted here means that when you are doing your job, the one that you are responsible and you don't have enough information about that, your responsibilities, then you have to look for someone you need to consult to give you more information or more knowledge so you can perform your duty very well or discharge or you should be able to deliver your deliverable. And whom do you consult? The person that is consult, Red will tell you whom to consult. The person you need to consult is the person, uh, a subject matter expert, a domain expert, a process owner, who, who must have been working within a process for many years, have a lot of experience and information on that process. Maybe being, maybe you are a business analyst and you want to improve on that process. You have all the techniques, you have all the expertise, you know how to improve it, but you don't understand that particular software that you need to work on. You need to consult the subject matter expert so that it can give you more knowledge. At least we have to understand the current process. Then we have I inform in RACI. I here means some people need to be informed about what is going on in a project. You need to carry them along. They might be big stakeholders, they might be small stakeholders. In some of the projects that I've deployed, I have to carry the CEO of the company along. He needs to be informed about what we are doing. He doesn't, uh, he, he's not, it's not accountable. But whatever is going on, he must know. Although most of the time you will not see him, but he, he must know what is going on. And you don't need to be calling him all the time to be telling him this is what, this or that. What you do is that within the project environment, like um, I've shown you people base camp, you can add the person within the base camp. Please put yourself. yourself. So you can add the person within the base camp and then uh, configure the level of um, access control. The person might not be able to um, doing anything cannot tamper we cannot he cannot change any document he cannot delete any document but all he can do is that the person can only uh, sign in and view what is going on so his um access is just view because within the environment you have as the 
project manager, you have the power to assign everybody with the level of access control you need the person to have. If you want some people to just be following the project, then you just give them that access. Some people can be students on internship within the company, and they need to follow projects to, under, to learn from what is going on. But because they don't have enough knowledge, you don't want them to tamper with anything, to mess around with project documents. So you just give them access to just monitor and follow up with what is going on. Some people might be um, process owners, which owns the process that you are improving upon. So you give them access for them to know how the, the progress is going on. So these are the various, very, 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 please mute yourself. These are various ways you can uh, inform stakeholders about what is going on. Then here we have RA that is responsible and accountable. Some people can be responsible and they like some project managers, they will still be working on some tasks. So they can be responsible and accountable at the same time. Some people can just be there for you to be consulted and know what is going on. So you can, can consult them and they will be fully into to see what is going on. And of late, the professionals, the, the, the school of thought or the people that develop the, this RACI as a method, there has been ongoing, um, criticism and debate about so many rules. I feel that support is not captured within the race because you find out that in project management, some people are not actually um, project team members. They cannot uh, deliver any deliverable. They are there to support the project team. If they're having any issues, they, they need documentation, they need templates. So they are, they are there for support, not to help to, to deliver the project. They are giving you the project team support. But they are not captured, and they are part of the projects in their own way. So that's what's going on. So that's why support comes here. But the standard 3C, is RACI, not RACIS. So that is uh, why you see support there. And to plan the RACI, the activities is always at the left-hand side. And the rules or the person always on the uh, upper top side of the 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 RACI metrics. So as you can see, this diagram or this um, metrics, the activities are here. So you list down the activities, and then from here you keep assigning who is who, what who is. So whenever you um, you feel that uh, like Adam is responsible, Adam is uh, accountable for this particular customer complaint reduction, you put A for Adam. Meaning maybe Adam is a project manager or Adam is a sponsor, depending on your understanding of the rule of everybody. You plan it this way. Most of the time, it is the duty of the project manager to do this racing. And then every other team member can have access to the racing. So the, 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 the business analysts, in case if there is, because so many organizations find out they don't have racing, they are just doing a project. So based on their own um, expert knowledge, 
even if you are a business analyst, you can develop a read in order to understand what you are doing. If you if they like, you the, the job I've just started, there are so many projects I've gone through, they don't have good um, um, project um, stakeholder analysis documentation, there is no read. You know, I'm not the project manager, but I've initiated an action for us to develop uh, a read so that we can, um, every other team member, people will not be confused on what to do and what not to do. And we've started the process. So you mustn't be a project manager. So once you have good knowledge of this, this is what we call good housekeeping in projects when you use relevant documents to tidy the project. Everybody, somebody might just be in the organization or possessing high office, maybe because of long term of service in the organization, just be promoting the person. But the person might not really understand the rudiments of the project management. So when you come in, you do what um, is necessary. So that is racy. So I will not be wasting much time on racy because we're going to be doing it live very soon that we're going to be starting working on live projects. But if you are still confu um, uh, confused about racy metrics based on the last lecture we had and uh, this one, you can ask your questions. Okay, we move to the next topic, which is going to be stakeholder analysis. Stakeholder analysis involves identifying and analyzing the stakeholders that are likely to affect or be affected by a particular project activity. Then planning to commit, um, communicate and engaging with them. It is used in project management to develop engagement and cooperation between project team and the project stakeholders. When you do your analysis, you should be able to understand the stakeholders very well. Their position, ranging from their position in the organization down to their position in the project. What they stand there for you, the, the way you communicate with them, the way um, you report to them, and the way you manage them when you feel there is they are becoming a risk to, to your projects. You understand all these things through a thorough stakeholder analysis. To conduct a stakeholder analysis, the first thing to do is to invite the project team and the key representatives from the management explain the purpose for conducting the stakeholder analysis, brainstorm the individuals and group who may have a stake in the project or the change efforts, plot each individual or group on the power interest metrics, sort them by the power they have and their interest in the project or change. Identify the gap between the current and the desired involvement level. That is the one of the major thing why you need to conduct this analysis to identify the gap. That's gap analysis. So this will help you to identify this gap where the stakeholder is supposed to be. 
When you see that a stakeholder is not where he's supposed to be, then you know that your project is at risk. So you have to quickly do whatever you need to do to move the stakeholder to where they are supposed to be in terms of engagement and communication within the project in order to solve the, uh, the risk or cover the gap. Create a communication plan to manage ongoing communication with them. Once you have identified the gap and uh, cover the gap, you must keep monitoring the gap by providing an effective communication. Most of the time, what is bringing this uh, gap is lack of appropriate communication. You might be talking to them, you might be chatting with them, you might, but you are not engaging them in the right manner, or you are not engaging them with the right document or with the right report or the standard way of uh, communication. That's why you need to develop a communication plan that is adopted by the company, their method of communication. So you can't say that uh, you are, you've worked with, um, after all, you've worked with um, Google, Facebook, uh, Microsoft, big, big companies. And now we are working with a small company. You know how to com do communication. That small company might not uh, be using the, uh, communicating the way Google and the rest are communicating. And they want to stick to their plan. So if you still want to be part of that organization, although they are small, you must have to learn their own way of communication. So understanding the stakeholders from the organizational structure. Here you can see you have various stakeholders here. So when you are doing your brainstorming, then you have to be listing all the people. What makes my own organization stakeholders? So don't just say that uh, this template is an automatic organizational stakeholder. It covers most of them, but it's not, um, not ex exclusive. So you can so you can say that uh, because of this. So that's why I say that you have to do a brainstorming with the stakeholders so that you people can be able to pick whom the organization think is a part of the stakeholder within the organization. Here we have employees. We have senior executives, shareholders, um, customers, suppliers, so contractors, end users, families of employees, investors, lenders, partners, union and regulators, community group, media, and the uh, the government, all these people are organizational stakeholders. Some of them are internal stakeholders, some of them are external stakeholders. Like most of the people at this uh, left hand side, they are internal stakeholders, except for families of employees, although they are families, so they should be external. But most of the people here at the right hand side are external stakeholders, like investors. They are not working within the, 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 the company. So the, the, the world they know is that they, they, you, 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 you can invite them during a uh, board meeting or depending on their level of investment. 
You have lenders like banks who lend money to the uh, company for them to run their business. They are stakeholders. They have interest to, to know how they are going to get their money back, how the company is running. If they are not comfortable with it, the way they, you guys are running your company. Then they have rights based on the agreements while getting the money. You have partners, company partners with other companies in order to either reduce the cost of operation or uh, I call it internal scale of um, economy. So these are stakeholders as well. You have um, unions and regulators, like those regulating the, 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 the particular business. The, organi the organization is running, such as bank, we have um, CBN, we have um, such as um, telecom, we have telecommunication regulators and the rest of them. We have community group. Community group uh, can be pressure group, you know, if the if the if the stakeholder the company is doing something that is affecting the community, the community group can raise as a pressure group, raise um, uh, become an uh, opposing factor to the organization. So you need to work with them to make sure that. You, they are happy with uh, what you guys are doing. You have the media. Media have the capacity to bring your company down within a short period of time. So we need to know how to manage your media, whether internal media and the external media, which is newspapers and the rest of them. And then government. Government, both local government, state government and federal government and government prostatas and government agencies, they have strong influence over how companies are being run. So these are various stakeholders. Within their projects, you must look at all these stakeholders you can bring in to become stakeholders within your project based on the way your project is affecting them or them affecting your project. So it brings us to the project stakeholders. Project stakeholder is any individual or group who is responsible for any of the project activity or will be affected by the by the project or its outcome. So looking at here, we have projects later. Most of the time, we have, can be in, in person of uh, project manager. Because in projects, we have one leader. There can never be two leaders in a project. Is either you are a high stakeholder, yes, you can be a high stakeholder, but you, can, you are not the project leader. You can even have more power than the, the project manager within the organization. The, the, the project manager might be a junior officer to you, but he has been given power to run that project. So everybody needs to respect the project leader, which is the project manager. Because there can be two captain in a ship, or you will start having confusion. When so, the one person give order, another person will counter the order, and the project will start um, shaking. So there must be one leader, which is the project manager. If you are a project manager, try to understand their role, their position in that project. Don't be pushed around, though you don't need to be stubborn, but understand that you need to be firm in order to manage your project very well. Most of the time you see 
you see stakeholders trying to write the project manager, pushing them around. And before you know it, the project started having problems. And when this kind of uh, problem started coming out, you see the, those stakeholders will just disappear and you start carrying your cross. So you must be careful. That's why you need to identify stakeholders and know how to manage them diplomatically. Then we have project team members. These are the, the project team members. People are working within the project, handling one um, deliverables or one post or the other, like uh, business analysts, developers, and the rest of them. You have process owners. Process owner as a subject matter experts. They own the pro they might be the owner of the process. Maybe if your people are doing a process improvement, maybe I, you people are automating the process or integrating the process or improve adding more features on a process. So the process owner must be part of that project because he'll be giving you people more information, more especially at the beginning. And is the person to tell you who the kind of pain points that, um, when I mean pain points, I mean challenges the company has been having within that particular process. Then here we have um, people who work on the process um the process owner who have process owner and who have people who work on the process process owner is the person that owns that process he manage the process make sure the process works where well, most of the time they can be the administrator within the process for instance a cost a crm customer relationship management software we have a process owner, somebody who owns that within can be the, the head of um, customer's relations or customer relations uh, ship manager. But we have other people like sales team, marketing team working within uh, that process um, to interact with customers, uh, solve customers' problem or try to make sales or get lead from within that particular So These are people working within the process. Then we have customers of the process output. There's a lot of customers using the CRM. There's customers that they use this process to relate with. So they are the customers of the process. Then we have suppliers of the process. These are vendors. Most of all these softwares are owned by people and they sell these softwares either through subscription or selling of license. So you buy their license, you make use of their, their product, which is like CRM, ERP, and the rest of them. So there are vendors like Microsoft, um, Salesforce, SAPs, and the rest of them. So they are the suppliers of the process. Then you have within the organization, we have operations manager, we have finance manager, we have procurement manager, we have uh, HR manager, we have performance manager, we have senior executive. These are big, big men in the organization that can derail your project if you don't manage them very well. So you, as a project manager, must know, or even the business analyst, must know how to work and um, collaborate with these people so that they can be of use to you, not a threat or a risk to you. Then we've um, we break it down steps 
to easily manage these stakeholders. Because so many times we find out that people, when, when they want to start this stakeholder analysis, they don't even know where to start. They don't know where to start from just start creating a, a managing communication plan or to start with uh, some people just down, um, jump into plotting um, power metrics. And along the line, they will do their stakeholders management and their stakeholders management will not be effective because they didn't follow it sequentially. So the first thing is you must brainstorm individuals and group who may make your stakeholders list within that project. Once you get a <coughs> list of these people, you start sorting them out based on their power and their interests. You ask questions, consult to understand their power. Then, when you understand their power, you create a matrix, a four-dimensional matrix, it's four boxes. You can use paper to create it. Although we've developed uh, a template to use for it, but that doesn't mean that you can, you can use only the templates. You can use paper to draw four boxes and start writing names and the power within your yeah, your box. Because some people think that if you know if you don't use it in the way it is here in template, you are not uh, doing a um a power interest matrix. It's just to beautify it and make it easier. So you plot each of the stakeholder within their power and interest um, matrix, then identify the gap. When you plot them and manage them a little, that will help you to know whether you have a gap. Because this is an ongoing management. You don't just do everything. You cannot identify the gap immediately you join the organization. Maybe you have called one or two meetings, some stakeholder, they don't turn up, you know. So you, this is, when it's still, it's still an important stakeholder refuse to attend their meeting without uh, pre informing you or any reason, you can see that as a risk coming. So, if you are, if I'm in your shoe as a project manager, as a business analyst, I will put that stakeholder in the in my listing as a risk, I will even log it in in um in my red log as a risk. Because if that kind of thing happens again and again, then you are in trouble. Even twice you're already in trouble because your timeline is at stake. And your budget is at stake as well. Because when you are missing your timeline, it starts affecting your, your the cost of that project. So you need to create a plan um, and in engagement. Um, you need to identify the gap between the current and desired states based on the happenings and then create a communication plan, which is number five. So that is um, how you do it. So the first thing we do is to identify who makes the list. And to do that, we are going to use affinity diagram. This is what we call affinity diagram. So we'll help you to plot, um, group your stakeholders in, in one diagram. So, like we can see here, we have um, the project itself and the project leader and the team members. So within the, this is a project going on within the organization. 
and this is the organization. So everybody within here is a, within the organization. They are all internal stakeholders. So both within this, all of you, even the project team members, they are project, um, they are all stakeholders within in the um, organization and everybody here within is internal. So we have senior management officers still within the organization. They can affect your project. Then we have process owners, people who work within the process. We group them because they have more interest in this project than just ordinary senior management because you need to work with them because they know the they have what you you are you are looking for you are looking at understanding the process and these people will give you information then you have other internal stakeholders so they might not be uh, related to this box you still need to keep them within your close range but the senior management can be some of them can be the initiators of this project then you have finance team it's always there because project is money so you need to understand the finance team as well and this is the customers you know they can see them here they are external stakeholders you can still have other like government officials outside here and regulators around here, not inside, but within here. But this just to show you that external stakeholders are captured outside the organization within this whole affinity diagram. Now we've uh, list the stakeholders, it's time to um look at their power and interest which is the 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 key thing you look at who is powerful when you list stakeholders here you list their their position in the organization you list their position in the project that is their project in the role so during the brainstorming you'll be asking questions to understand they are relevant powers within the project. And when you're asking this question, they will always tell you who is who. More especially the program manager will, as a, as a project, when you have a pro, meeting with the project manager or the, 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 the sponsor of the project, the person will be very happy to tell you all the people that are involved and their power and how to relate to them because he wants you to succeed because if you succeed, he succeeds as well. So you need to interact with them. And here, their level of awareness within the project. So, and here is the interest. Their interest here can range based on do they have interest in this project? Which, what, uh, what is the, the role they are playing with I mean, their interest? And again, um, another thing you can use for interest uh, to understand this stress is there, once you, you start calling um, their attention, if they, do they show interest, do they don't show interest, these are other ways of understanding <clears throat> interest. But their role will tell you their level of interest, how they're supposed to be, what they should be interested. If they are supposed to be interested in this program, they don't show interest. That means they are not supporting you. So you need to arrive the level of supportiveness. They are not supporting you, maybe You've called one or two meetings, they don't turn up without any reason, they don't show interest, and they, 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 are, they are not supposed. So you need to lift here, they are, they are not supportive, either supportive or not supportive. 
So if they are not supportive, then it's time to run around, to, to, to seek their support or to, to buy, use the particular word buying, to buy in their support. Buying in their support doesn't mean bribing them or, or lobbying them, but try to find out why they are not supporting you. It means you are not giving them enough attention, then you have to start giving them attention. If you mean you, you are not carrying them along, you need to do that. Find out that thing that you are not doing well and start doing it well in order to gain their support. Once you have um, identified the power and the interest the stakeholders have, then from that power, you, you identify, plot it here. So from this um, table, you start plotting this matrix. Say, this is high power and low interest group come here. And this is a high power, high interest group come here. And this is, um, Low, low power, low interest come here. And this is um, low power, high interest come over here. So after plotting them, you know what each box means. This particular box under high power, low interest, say that you should understand whoever belongs to this box. And when you understand whoever belongs to this box, satisfy their need. You must follow this particular um, directives. So this particular box says that when you see anybody in this box, engage them and manage them actively. So whoever finally comes to this box, this is, you follow these directives. Then this boss says, whoever makes this boss, monitor them and inform them occasionally. Then you follow the directive. This boss says, whoever makes it here, Consider them and uh, keep them informed. So you follow it. That's how you monitor you monitor them. And eventually, this red man, this person, because they are danger, you use red to indicate them. Most of the time they are stubborn. But they are not stubborn, depending on what they don't. They don't just have interest, so they are risky people. I keep on saying it that I keep using the example of uh, health and safety officers, more especially here in UK, which I've witnessed, and that's why I'm always using them. Once they are coming to to a site, more especially construction sites, we see people running health as skelter. Well, they can come and just Immediately they are coming there, they are just sealing the, the, the sites because of, although you go to so many sites, you see a lot of hazard. So these people, once they come there, they, they just take action. And so you need to understand them. As a project manager in that site, understand them, understand what the health and safety says in order to avoid their problem. Once you understand what the health and safety says, you see some of the fire extinguisher within the site and they have expired. Then you know you are the person looking for trouble. As a project manager, these are requirements. You need to follow strictly. Make sure that all the fire extinguishers there are not expired. So make sure that uh, you check them and keep them valid at all times. You make sure that there is adequate method statements within the construction site. 
you make sure that you induct all the the anybody was in the site and everybody within the site is insured you make sure that um, there's adequate ppe that is protective equipment depending on the kind of work everybody is doing once you do all these things which is uh, specified within the health and safety law then you won't have any problem with health and safety officials if you are working in telecommunication and you are not following all these rules, you are going to have problems. If you are working in a bank, bank have directives. Once you, you go against the, 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 the limit of the loan you need to give to the people without a normal collateral, no matter your position, the bank will, the CBN, during their periodic check, you are going to be in trouble. And that's why they closed so many banks in Nigeria because of, of some of all these uh, sharp, sharp practices. So you make sure you do all these things to not to fall for these guys. For instance, if you are some of us that are into data management job, you need to understand the amount of uh, uh, customer or clients data that you use. You can't use your client's data for marketing purposes without their knowledge. That is um, outside the, the, the requirement of the, the GDPR. The GDPR, which is data protection law, says that you must let the, 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 the customer or the client know how you use their data. You need to take permission that I'm registered, that I'm, I mean, um, I'm a bank customer, doesn't mean that you have to go because you have all my details. You go and um, sell my details to politicians and they'll be selling me, sending me unnecessary um, messages or because you are a telecommunication operator, you have all my data, you have everything, you go and sell my, my data, to the politicians. That's what nearly closed down Facebook because Facebook are mismanaging people's data. They don't have right to do that. So you need to understand all these requirements. When you understand that, you find out their project will be very healthy. And these people here, you need to engage them actively. They own that project. They own it, so you need to keep them engaged actively and let them know what, once you keep them engaged actively, following, keeping them engaged doesn't mean you'll be, you'll be flashing them or sending them um, uh, unnecessary messages or emails. Keeping them engaged means providing them with reports of what you are doing. If you are meant to be submitting your report on a on weekly basis by 12, um, 12 noon, make sure that by 12 noon you've submitted your report. At the end of the week, maybe Fridays or Thursdays, by, the, by 12 noon, your report should be with your, your line manager for validation to see what you've been doing within the week. But if you miss to submit your report twice, you are going to be in trouble. You might not say anything, but you know that you are not uh, capable or that you are not uh, responsible or reliable. Or if you have been submitting your report late, you need to submit your report by 12 noon and you find out that every Friday you submit your report by 5 p.m. while the manager should be going home as well you should submit your report by 12 p.m. by 12 um 12 so that the, the line manager will have time to go through your report before your line manager goes to not when you are going home you can submit your report how do you expect him to be in the office to be reading your report while you've gone home so these are some of the things you'll be some project managers will be misbehaving and they will saying that some the project that their stakeholders are 
their stakeholders are difficult. And here we see people within this uh, place. They can be just customers that uh, you need to just uh, monitor. Or most of the time, they are technicians, which you need to monitor them. You don't need to uh, inform them about it because um, you don't need to be give sending report to them because um, you are not reporting to them. But you can inform them occasionally about what is going on. Maybe um, through meeting, having a, a weekly meeting where every, everybody attends the meeting. To, it can be weekly briefing. Or it can be before the, the, the work starts every day. You brief, depends on the approach you are using to manage your project. In um, agile methodology, we use daily stand-up to always uh, carry everybody along. Everybody have the, the, the opportunity to see what they are doing and then talk to everybody within the project. If it's um, within construction sites, it can be site briefing. The morning before everybody goes to their work, you can have a brief, like 10 to 15 minutes briefing and uh, try to remind everybody to the, the, the goal of the project so that they remain focused. And then you need to monitor them. You don't leave them. You keep, you monitor them thoroughly because some of them, they are not interested in the, the success of the project. They want the project to keep, a project that is supposed to be um, six months, they want it to last for four years so that they can have a place to go to work. So you monitor them because you are, your goal is different from their own goal. So that's why you have to monitor them. Both of you don't have the same objective. The objective is to make sure you, are, you close your project within the timeline. And their own objective is to make sure that they have a place to go to work every morning. So monitor them so that they can do their job, deliver, perform their, and deliver their deliverables for you in order to um, deliver your projects within the timeline. So these people here, you need to consider them have high interest in this project, but they don't have power. You know, some of them are the process owner, I uh, mean the process users. They are going to use the outcome of this particular process we are developing within the organization. But if it's outside the organization, they can just be um, the users of that uh, product. Like I keep, I normally use Facebook uh, to make illustration. You find out that once in a while, Mark will just come and inform us about what he's doing. You know, so, and we'll be, all of us will be happy to know that uh, one feature is coming or the update. So it's considering us and informing us. Some of us here can be vendors. They want to know the stage of these projects to know when they are going to be coming to submit their quotation so that you people can buy their products or their software. So you need to let them know, inform them about what's going on so that people will, they will come and uh, make their tenders. They want to sell their product. So, and that is how you use this to manage your stakeholders. And once you've done that, the next thing is to develop um, um, a gap um, to look for, develop a, a gap analysis to look at their involvement level. You try to identify the gap between the current and the desired involvement level. 
So looking at um, what you have uh, observed from the um, from the power metrics, then you start plotting them based on where they are and where they are supposed to be. So some of them that have not been um, supportive, then you have to work hard to gain their support. Like you can see here, somebody here is not, uh, like for instance, if you have put the name of the stakeholder here, while ticking this box, you find out that this stakeholder here is not interested in what is going on here and he's not supportive. So this is the gap. We've identified the gap. Any, any, any of these boss you do not tick for any particular stakeholder is a gap. So this is a gap here. What do you do? You come here, you work hard to make sure that you gain their support. And once you gain their support, desired level, yes, you gain their support, you have good relationship with them, you tick, you tick here. Means you uh, buy them into your support line. Then you move on to plan your communication plan for ongoing communication to make sure you don't miss you don't miss them within the, where they are supposed to be, or they don't they don't go out of their desired uh, involvement area. You keep them actively support um, engaged by using the right contacts and the right method, and uh, knowing whom to communicate and um, how often you communicate them and the level, the, 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 the kind of feedback you need. So whenever you communicate them, you log the feedback. This feedback will help you over time to understand your relationship with uh, a stakeholder. Look, looking at what the, the feedback, all the feedback a stakeholder has been giving you after analyzing the feedback, you should know whether the stakeholder is supporting you or not supporting you, which we will use for ongoing planning and managing your stakeholder management. Because stakeholder management is not a one-off thing. You can't say, I've done my stakeholder management at the beginning, I don't need to do it. You keep doing it, you keep collaborating with them. So it's an ongoing activity till the project comes to an end. So here are the documents we've been talking about, which are the, 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 the documents we are going to be using. So this is a screenshot of the document we are going to be using. We have it in a Excel template. So this is the role and involvement worksheet we've already discussed. This is involvement planning worksheet. This is the current and the desired level, and this is the stakeholder. And this is the communication action worksheet. This is the stakeholder method of communication, who, how often, phone, email, and the feedback log. And here is stakeholder position rule, power, aware, interest, and supportive. So you have it with this. You don't need to go and start planning again to develop a, this document. So this will speed up your knowledge of uh, stakeholder management. Once you have this no, stake, uh, document with this uh, level of um, education about stakeholder management, you're already a powerful project manager or business analyst. Because it's fine, so many training people have gone, they'll just teach you about stake, but you will never see any document, you will never see anything, and it makes it very difficult because seeing picture is uh, more powerful than all this uh, blah, 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 blah.
So using this uh, particular um, case study, we are going to just look at how we can do this in real time in, 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 a, in a live project where you can see stakeholders here, you can see, for instance, stakeholders, you see Adam, Sunny, Operator, Zakaria, Procurement, and Sarah. We are using some of them, Adam and Sunny, uh, because in, in, in stakeholders, some of them, depending on the organization, I like, might not, uh, my judge said to say Operator, because some of them, they don't want a situation where maybe Adam leaves the company, they will go and start uh, rewriting. So they say operator or procurement. Who is ever in charge of procurement? Whether new or you, you will have a, um, the contact number for procurement. Even if you don't know the name of the person, know that is the, this particular um, types of activities. Main is uh, for procurement. A stakeholder who is so you know whom to contact, or the operator, you know whom to contact. But some of them they use name. So when they use name here, equally they are going to tell you the position. But like here, you see operator, they will drill down here because you might have so many operators, it's tell you that is the line operator. And they say procurement, then it might just be procurement. So all these things are not uh, like mathematics. You need to understand how it works. So, and you can see here, we have like using Adam here, Adam who is the finance manager and the, in the company, and in that project is the financial advisor. And then in, um, in terms of power, Adam have got high power, you know, as the finance manager in the organization and the finance advisor, for instance, this is a, a cross rail project here in, in law in UK, which is a, a big, very big project. So somebody who is a financial advisor in a multi-billion uh, pounds project must have a high power. So, and then the level of awareness is um, somehow aware. Or it shouldn't be, so you should be aware of what is going on. So being somehow aware with the, the high power means that something is wrong and Interested? No, he's not being interested with this kind of power. Something is wrong. And with what is going on already, his high power is somehow aware he, he doesn't have interest. Then you don't, you, you, you think you have uh, his support. He, he's, you find out that he's not supporting. With all these things, all these um, indicators, somehow and no, you can see that at the end of the day, is not supportive. So if you are the project manager with this kind of um, data in your stakeholder management uh, document, you have to work hard to get Adam's support. So that is it. Okay, let's look at somebody who is a supportive. Sarah, is a training manager and the training facilitator. In uh, in terms of uh, power, here yeah, we don't we have only uh, in my own. I don't use medium. I just use either high or low power. So under this uh, medium, I will classify it as as um, as high power. So because there is no high or low for me. There is no medium. Once you have cross, I can say that even five from the range of um, 10, if you are measuring it from, from one to 10, somebody is within the five, you should be a high power. 
So, and um, interest, he, he away, yes. Interested, yes. And supportive, yes, you can see. With these two data, you should be able to understand whether the person is supportive or not. So, coming here, you can see Adams. So, he's here. And what does this say? He said, understand. Understand and uh, satisfy them. That's what he says. Under this, uh, our first metrics, it says understand and satisfy their need. So we come here. We're looking, Adam is, um, Adam here, you can see Adam is already showing red. All these people are red. The Adam, he say understand. And so, so you need to understand Adam and satisfy Adam in order to, to have peace of mind in this project. So you understand and satisfy. Then Zachariah and Sami here, here said, engage them. So you keep engaging them. Then this um, technician here, you monitor them so that they can do their job because most technicians, both developers, both electricians, both plumbers, they are the same thing. They are interested in their daily pay because some of these people, they are not ready to, they don't give a damn about what's going on. And somebody is even adding one, adding um, small money on top of what you are paying them. They will just leave you immediately. So, you know, so they don't have interest. But if they don't have a job, they are ready to do anything to make sure that this project moves beyond the project timeline so that they can have a place. So you have to you have to monitor them, prompt them to do their job. And people here, you need to consider them, carry them along, inform them about what is going on. So then in this particular diagram, This is there to understand their level of awareness. You see, these people in big are uh, people that are aware, somehow aware and unaware. See, like big, um, uh, they say this one in big, uh, meaning that they are aware. Medium means somehow aware and the uh, small is unaware. So, with this, you look at these people, they are aware. So like these people that are unaware, like you see people in small districts, they are unaware. You work out to make sure that they are aware, they know everything they need to know. Although somehow aware, they can be somehow aware. They, everybody must be work together. You, know, work, you must work with everybody to create the level of awareness they need to have within this project. Because this lack of awareness within the project, maybe the project is not uh, transparent, there is no communication, lack of information, everything is sketchy. That will make them to, some of them are not, they will be grumpy, they, they, they are not happy because they don't, most of the things going on, they, there's not much information. So you need to, work hard to bring them where they are supposed to be. So, and this particular diagram, 
is the major one of the major things when you are using this uh, receive uh, this uh, power metrics. Or when you see a stakeholder is in um, red red color, then there is danger. Everybody, if this project is it is the way it's supposed to be, everybody supposed to be in green in green shirt. So if anybody here is not, if you are managing and you find out that any of your stakeholder after your analysis is in red color, you must work hard to bring them to become green, not even neutral. If there is no need for anybody to be neutral, if they are neutral, means they are even it's still risk. But you can say is they may be low risk, but red danger. So you have to work hard for them to be green. That's how you manage and uh, get their level of support that you need. So that is. Um, all you can say about um, RACI, um stakeholder management uh, in stakeholder analysis. So the next thing here, which we are going to do before we finish this night is um, personal analysis. We understand them the stakeholders based on their um, political, economic, social, technological, legal, and environmental um, involvement or awareness. And that's what we call um, PESO analysis. To digest this very well, let's go to this uh, PESO analysis three, to look at it very well. Under this PESO analysis three, this first branch is political. Then you need to understand their level of a political inclination how political factor can affect this uh, project within the stakeholder or anybody. So you need to understand how it is can affect this, but then you need to find the stakeholders to manage within this line. Here is politics, political office holders. If this project, what can affect this project under political branch is a tariff and taxation. You need to find who is in charge of this tariff and taxation and work closely to understand what they want. If it's labor law and policy, you need to find out how this is going to affect this project and they work hard to make sure that this project is meeting all the requirements. If it's uh, under economic, economic stability, then you have to find out how economic um, stability can uh, affect this project. Maybe if you are citing the project within the area where the, there is, um, let's say, uh, the spending pattern is low, then you know whether this project is meant for the stakeholders within here or customers within this environment. If the customers within here cannot afford this particular project you are citing here, then you better move it away from these people within this environment, like uh, see unemployment rates is uh, so high within this, environment or within this and they are we are trying to 
to, to, to cite a project that people cannot afford because of. So you need to look at it if the interest rate is affecting your project or exchange rates. Then you know whether you need to cite the project. Like for instance, in Nigeria, if most of your activity is buying um, goods and services maybe abroad and this, then you know that whether is is whether is it the right time to to because the exchange rate is rising. Why you you can go to market and find out that the exchange rate so it's going to be difficult. The fluctuation might be difficult for you to to do your business. Then you know if you need to 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 suspend the project because looking at that the project level of viability might not be there due to the fluctuation in um, foreign currencies. So you look at social social factor within the social branch. You look at lifestyle, is their lifestyle uh, um, good enough to support their, your, your, your business? or the projects we are trying to, to manage, or the level of education, or the language skills, these are the things you need to um, understand. So when you understand it, you should be looking at the potential opportunities and threats. Like looking at here, this red is threats, economic, Threat. This is a threat like, for instance, I said change rates. It, it might be a threat here. And all these ones are threat. These areas you need to do more jobs. And this area with a potential opportunity, green color, see potential opportunity. Like in a country where there is a government stability, then you know that is a good place to, to move your project or even move your business operation. For instance, that's why so many companies in the um, Western world, both America and Europe, they are moving to Ghana because there is high level of economic stability, government stability. If you go to Ghana, if there is peace there. That's why Twitter is going there. Google is going there. Everybody is because of stability. And instability in Nigeria is making a lot of companies to run away. So use these three to understand what you need to do when you are managing your projects. Because your project might be to go and uh, move operation to, to another country or within a geographical area or within um social demography or the rest so you need this to understand to write your reports and know what to do at any point in time so with that i think um we'll, we'll stop at this special analysis for this night um, and tomorrow we'll continue from risk management techniques. So if you have any question, although all these things we are doing is something we've done in project uh, management, but this is just um, a refresher class on this. But if you have any question, you can bring it on. Any question? Okay. Hello, sir. Yeah, Choma. Um, good evening, everyone. Good evening, sir. Yeah. I have um, a little. I have a little concern with um, these people in uh, that fall under the high risk. High but, risk. Uh, 
um, show interest. And then we need to find a way to get them to all be green. So we don't have some people showing red and some neutral. Techniques or tips that we can employ to get these people to all be interested in the project and spot in line with us. After, like, you know, we can't bribe them, we can't do so, um, those other things. So, how else can we get them to all be on the same team and be interested? Like, uh, what I told you that every box. Every box give you a directive on what to do. You have a directive. The box is directing you on what to do. Let me pull it again. Look at here. Everybody that is here, this box have a standard requirement to manage whichever risk that is here. You don't need to bribe them. You don't need to follow what they said. What does this say? Understand them. What do you mean by understand them? There is a law. There is a regulation. There is requirement. There is not something you need to do. Understand that thing you need to do and do it. That is what they said. Let's look at uh, look at it from where where is uh, more elaborate. Here, see, understand them and satisfy their need. And I use the example that you, if you are managing a project in a, a construction site, there is what the law said about that project, mainly health and safety, obeying the health and safety rule. Understand, here means understand the health and safety rule. If you are working in, in a bank project, understand CBN rule. If you are working with data management problem, understand the current GDPR or data protection law. If you are working in telecoms, understand the telecommunication regulation. Once you understand the regulation, if you are citing a project in local government, understand the local government council rule about the project and satisfy that particular, not these people, they are just a representation of, they are representing the law. So when you understand the law and satisfy the law, they are going to be happy. That is how you manage them and you get them to green color. People here who are in red color, what did they say? Engage them. Engage them doesn't mean you always need to be sending them text messages or unwanted or you spamming their email by every day you send them uh, good morning, sir. Good evening, sir. They don't need that good evening, sir. They need performance reports. If you mean to send performance reports, send the performance re re uh, report on time. That is engagement. You are engaging them with your reports. And they are going to be happy. When you engage them, manage them act actively. Actively is sending the report. Not is two weeks we've not sent the report to your to your project sponsor, and you want him to be happy? No. And I think people here, I used the example that they are, most of them are technicians. Monitor them and prop them to do their job. People here, consider them and carry them along. So that's how you manage them. You buy them over is not uh, giving them bribe. Buy them over with what they want in this project. Whatever, they don't want your money. They don't want bribe. What they want in this project, 
this person wants engagement in this project and this person wants you to understand them in this project and these people want you to monitor them so monitor them these people want you to consider them so consider them so have i answered your question yes you have thank you okay any more questions okay I will leave you to go and rest. I see so many of you are tired. Me, myself, I'm tired. All right. See you here same time tomorrow. Very soon, we'll have some time to relax. But it's time for work. So I encourage you to remain steadfast. And uh, good night.